Okay, okay, let's go ahead. So uh, thanks for being here. So I would like to discuss the potential of our data data simulation to the social system dynamics. So the social hydrology. So what is it? The social hydrology is the emerging research field in which two-way feedbacks between social and the water systems are investigated. So there are many interesting and important research questions in social hydrology. For instance, how did the flood controls change our cities? And how did our, our cities change the flood control and the water cycles? How long can we keep the memory of past disasters? Because if we have the memory of the past disasters, we're going to take appropriate action to the in upcoming disasters. But how long can we keep the memory of that? And how did we balance between the development and the environmental restoration? It is all, always really debatable topic in the environmental management. And this is our own study. How should we issue the flat hour warning considering social collective trust in the weather forecasting? So people in case in some cases trust the weather forecasting, but people in some cases don't. So how can we manage? To optimize our our warning, our flood warning in those kinds of social uh, complex systems, and we are we have two major approaches in the social hydrological domain. So first one is the simulation, social system dynamics. So the the advantage of the social hydrological simulation is that we can get a special temporary continuous social state by solving the differential equations. And we can improve our understanding of our society by simulating the unrealized scenario. So that in the computer, we can simulate anything so to deepen our understanding. However, the limitation of that is apparently that the model is un inaccurate. And we need many hypotheses to construct a model which mimic the really complex social phenomena. On the other hand, if you use the observation of social statistics, uh, good news is that they are more accurate than the simulation. However, in the social hydrological domain, the observation is uh, really uh, sparsely distributed. And also, it is difficult to quantify the causal relationship in the complex social uh, system domain. So, yeah, actually, the situation is really similar in the geoscience. So, model data integration is crucially important to push the limit of the social hydrological approach. So, the this is what I believe. And also, the, the, this is a kind of dreamy goal, but my dreamy goal is to construct a nature social reanalysis. So, in the era of Anthropocene, we should recognize our Earth as a coupled system between nature and society. So, we are going to construct the reanalysis for the whole system as the extension of the atmospheric reanalysis. So we would like to develop the digital twin of the world by integrating the observation and the simulation in the whole carbon system. So towards these kinds of dreamy goals, my first step is to explore the potential of sequential data estimation as a model data integration in the social hydrologic domain. And our my today my high social hydrologic model is a flat risk model. Uh, this is one of the most famous model in our community. So this model deals with the interaction between flood and the city dynamics. So this first equation shows the damage of flooding. So flood damage depends on the water level, but the water level is recognized as an input forcing in, the, in this model. So water level is not explicitly solved by hydrological model or uh, uh, any other river models. And it becomes larger with lower levy height and shorter distance between city center and the river. So if the city is ro ro located near the floodplain, the damage gets increased. And this equation shows the, 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 how the people construct the levy. So when the flood damage is larger than the cost of constructing new levy, they're going to increase the levy height. And the, the, the amount of the increase in levy height depends on the past flood level. So I think it is reasonable, isn't it? And this is a simplified function of the economical growth 
So economic growth rate is higher when the city is located near the river. So we assume that the place around the flat plain or around the river is the economically efficient than the mountainous area. I think this is a reasonable assumption, at least qualitatively. So growth rate is higher around the river. However, the point is the flood risk is higher, also higher in the city alongside the river. So we face the trade-off between flood risk and the efficiency of economy. And the city moves towards the river when they do not have the memory of flooding. So if they forget about the flood, they undermine the risk of a huge flood. So that they're gonna they're gonna make the city towards the river in order to maximize the efficiency of the economy, efficiency of their economy. Right? And lastly, uh, this equation uh, uh, simply simplifies the dynamics of our memory of the disaster, social collective memory of the disasters. So this is really simple. They have a high level of awareness to floods when they are damaged by floods. So they, when they hit the floods, uh, they remember the floods. It's quite natural, right? But they gradually forget it and reduce the, the awareness when the huge flood doesn't infrequently occur. And I simply uh, applied the particle filter to this model. So my work is really simple. I applied the Vanilla SIR particle filter to the flood list model. So yeah, I do, I think that I, I do not have to explain the details of the particle filter, but the point is one of the uniqueness of our method is that we did not inflate or perturb the state variable in the resampling step. Because the, our input forcing and the model parameters are significantly perturbed, so we can maintain the diversity of the particle without perturbing the state variable itself. And we can avoid the filter degeneracy by perturbing only the input and the model parameters. So first I'm going to explain the real data experiment to, to clarify the, how the data assimilation works in this model. And then I'm going to uh, move on to the idealized experiment or OSAC to deepen the understanding of the, how it works. So my study area is a Tybell river basin, a Roma in Italy. So it looks beautiful. I really want to go uh, after beating this pandemic. And I have three observation data. So first one is a high water level. This is the input data, input forcing, and the population data and the ready height as the observation to be estimated. And uh, this slide shows a model setting, a uh, problem setting. So we assume that external forcing is uncertain. So we have added the noise to the observed high water level to mimic the uncertainty of this external forcing. And also I have I assume the uncertainty in model parameter. So we assume these four parameters are unknown. So we try to jointly estimate the state and the parameter by the augmented state vector approach, I think. But the model assumes is perfect. So we have a single structure of the model. And this is a 500 ensemble simulation of this flat risk model in Rome. So we have four state variables, ready height, distance from river, settlement size, and awareness. And the gray lines are each ensembles, and the red line is ensemble mean. So you can see here, we have two bifurcated scenarios without that data assimilation. So one scenario has they, people construct the really high levy and they can protect the city and continue the economic growth, but they forget about the flood risk and they move their city toward the river. That's one scenario. And the other scenario has a zero levy, so they cannot, couldn't construct the levy due to the manual limitation. So that they uh, continuously get damaged by severe floods. But they can keep the memory, high level of memory of flood, so that they are, uh, their city is located far from the river. And when we assimilate the observation, maybe height observation and population observation, we can efficiently constrain the model trajectory very well. And in the real world, the Roma constructed uh, very high levy in uh, 1870s, 
and they can protect the city and continue the economic growth or stable growth. But they forget about the flood, maybe, and they their city is located really near the flood plain. So high levy, strong economic growth, and lower social awareness to disasters are accurately simulated by estimating really few number of observations. So it looks promising. So let's move on to the idealized experiment. So this is the OSSE. I think I don't have to explain the details of it. I think the, many of the audience are actually the better than me, uh, I think. So we generate the observation by the kind of true simulation and assimilated that the generated observation, we can try to uh, recover the true state and parameters. And the first scenario is similar to the what I've done in Roma. So we assume the external forcing is uncertain and we have four unknown parameters. And, but here I assume that we can get the observation every 10 years. So yeah, the uncertainty is really huge when we don't have any observation data because the parameter uncertainty is huge. But when, when we assimilate the data, we can effectively constrain the model trajectory as we show, we have shown in the, the Roma city. And because this is idealized experiment, so we can see we can have, we have the true parameters, which is the black line here. And the good news is our data assimilation can track, can can estimate, accurately estimate these true model parameters. So yeah, we can high skill. We have the high skill to uh, optimize the model parameters by particle filters, which is good. And this figure shows uh, the sensitivity of observation network to the results. So here, I although we, I even if I had one state, even if we had observation of only single state variables, particularly reduced the RMSE, and even if we have the observation only once in 100 years, but we still we can uh, dramatically reduce the RMSE. And uh, even if the observation error is huge, but we can uh, dramatically reduce the RMSE. So this is really good news because we cannot expect a dense observation in the social hydrological domain. So observation must be sparse. But by assimilating that kind of sparse observation network, we can effectively constrain the model trajectory. So this is really promising, I think. And the next scenario is a bit unique. So we assume that the flatten risk model itself is also uncertain. So to do this, I assume that these two parameters can temporarily change. So although in the data estimation, we assume this is a fixed parameter, but in the real world, these two parameter is temporarily changing, but driven by the unknown dynamics. This is a problem setting, but even in this case, by assimilating the observation, we can effectively constrain the model trajectory very well. And the, in this case, as you can see in the black line, the true model parameters is change, like this kind of stepwise manner. But our data estimation can somehow track the, this temporal change of the parameters, So, which is really uh, good news, I think. However, the honesty, I need to, I need to tune, calibrate the information parameters really intensively to get this result. So it, uh, it is still challenging to, to perform the joint state parameter estimation, especially when the parameter can, especially when we allow the parameter temporary changes. All right, so this is my conclusions. And I have some remarks about the future challenge of the data estimation to apply the social hydrological domain. So first one is, uh, yeah, social system is strongly nonlinear. So the, we have to construct the data estimation methods for strongly nonlinear systems. And although my model today is really small, but uh, in many cases, social system models are large, computationally intense. So scalability matters actually. And also the state parameter joint estimation is really challenging. Although we have lots of methodologies, but it's still challenging, I think. And also our dreamy goal is to constrain the nature society simultaneously. 
In that case, a strongly coupled data estimation is a key technology. So although many studies currently focus on the atmosphere ocean system, but we will, I really want to have the generalized theory for strongly coupled data estimation to, to be applied to each kind of the coupled systems. Okay, this is the end of my talk. Thanks. Thank you very much, Yohai, for this very interesting talk. Um, I think Lars Nerga is um, writing a question on the Etherpad. Um, maybe I ask um, a question myself mm -hmm. until he is ready. So, did you or do you plan to use um, measurements or observations for the social awareness? Uh, yes, this is uh, really challenging. So, in the real data experiment, I didn't use any social awareness observations. But uh, actually, the, there are many interview surveys or kind of questionnaire surveys to quantify the social awareness because it is a really important topic for social scientists so that we can construct some kinds of the observation operator to co directly compare the model set variables and those kinds of the questionnaire surveys. So this is one idea, but yeah, 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 your question is really reasonable. This is really challenging to assimilate those kinds of the kind of vague state variable or observations into the model. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, so, Lars Naga asks, um, do you expect that the nonlinearity still allows to use cross covariance for strongly coupled data assimilation in your systems? Or do you need something like fully nonlinear particle filters? Um, that's a really open question, I think. Uh, I don't have any ideas. But uh, yeah, still the system is still nonlinear. But uh, yeah, if you look at the short time scales and if you look at the kind of localized scales, it, it looks linear. So that uh, still I have some hope to, uh, to uh, ap apply the, the kind of covariance based data estimation to those kind of systems. But yeah, maybe the kind of full particle filter. Um, will be needed to uh, completely solve those kind of systems. But yeah, yeah this is an open question, I think. I don't have any strict uh, exact answers, but it, uh, yeah, but this is my idea. Okay, thank you. And he also says thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think there's no further questions.